I pray for you, but shame on you. The church has one flag and one only the Holy Cross. They will make war against the Lamb bunch of jokers. Honestly, you know, I pray we all meet the Lord Jesus face, face soon. For me, I pray very, very soon. Let me tell you, my beloved, when you meet Jesus Christ of Nazareth face to face, you will then, and then only for sure, beyond the slightest of any doubts, you will know not be. Only believe you will know. Because there you will see him face to face, you don't need faith anymore. You're gonna see him face to face. When you see him there, you will know this is the only true living God ever to exist there. Has never been, never will be any other God. But this sweetheart, his name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You will know this, no one will tell you, no one will teach you anymore. Because Christ will reveal that to you himself, you will know this and you will know that he was always in control from day one to the last day of existence he was always in control nothing slipped out of his hand for the palm of his hand when he grabbed something with his hand no one can take anything out of this hand it's the hand of god good luck go and fight against the lamb he overcame them why because he is the lord of lords and the king of all kings if you think you are kings of the world well he is the king of all kings he is the one who is in in stage. You and he is the one who plugs you out of your roots. It is the Lord who is in control. No one else. It's the Lord. Get striked by the Lord Jesus. The sound of harpists, musicians, flutists, and trumpeters shall not be heard in you anymore. Well, when you get striked, no more music. Oh. Well, finally we'll say goodbye to hollywood and with it the illuminatis because they have nestled in hollywood nestled absolute evilness comes out of hollywood so my beloved sons and daughters especially the younger generation if you're listening to hollywood music stop it's evil if you think you have this singer as your idol, as your role model, you're mistaken, my son. You're mistaken, my daughter. Don't ever take any rap singer, any singer that comes, that is a product of Hollywood. Don't ever, don't ever, don't ever follow such evilness. Let me tell you if you're not aware. The Illuminatis are Satan worshippers, period. Yes, like the Freemason. Don't let anyone deceive you. Don't let anyone deceive you. Freemasonry is satanic worship. Illuminati is satanic worship. And they have infiltrated the church to the highest rank. That's why you see the church behaving in a very weird way. And you're saying, what is going on? No, you need to wake up. Yes, it's happening because the church is infiltrated by Freemason, Satan worshippers people. And they have placed their own people in leadership roles in the church, dressed from outside like a lamb, but from inside they are vicious wolves. Destroying. Don't be surprised. Don't be shocked. Don't be shocked. They're not there for the Lord. Lord have mercy. Lord, honestly, it's very sad. Very sad. So my beloved, Hollywood will finally be crushed by the Lord Jesus because Hollywood has been the reason to brainwash millions upon millions upon millions of younger generation and sentence them to darkness. Oh. Don't, don't listen. Listen to a, a song that glorifies the Lord. Listen to a church hymn that praises the Lord. Stop listening to evil, evil songs. The drum beat is programmed deliberately to manipulate your subconscious mind. Some of you are very young here. You won't grasp, you won't even maybe believe what I'm saying. But this is a fact. This is a reality we need to face. 
So, you see some of these Hollywood celebrities, they go on the stage. The way it is set up, the movement on the stage, the way they dance, the way they move, the way they, the drum beats, it is satanic rituals. Please, I beg you, it will brainwash you no matter who you are and what you are. You cannot, you cannot control your mind the moment the subconscious mind is controlled. You cannot. When the subconscious mind is shaped, formed by the entertainment industry, you won't even know what hit you. You won't even realize you're going the wrong way. You will not. Because when the brain controls you, that's it, you're finished. You're finished. But I can assure you, no more harpists, no more flutists, no more trumpeters, no more musicians. See you later, alligator, Hollywood, you evil worshippers. What did they do to Mel Gibson? They gave him hell trying to stop him from putting the passion of the Christ in cinemas. Why? Because cinemas and the entertainment industry is controlled by Freemason. Wake up, honestly wake up. And what did they do to him about the sound of freedom? Child trafficking. Five years it was a battle to finally being released and shown in cinemas and other platforms five years of battle why but look when it comes to lgbt they will force from the highest to the lowest rank to do it and act upon it immediately big corporate worlds they support lgbt they have put that thing on their products why because they are all freemason And now the church. <laughs> the church wants to embrace. No more. America, you need to fall. You've gone too far. You are challenging Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Who do you think you are? I'm talking to the governmental system of America, not the people. There are some wonderful, faithful, genuine Christians in America whom I love and respect and honor. But the system of America is evil. So the White House, the White House needs to be changed. Like it's painted white, but the deeds are black. The deeds are black. The color is white, but the actions are all black. Maybe we should repaint the White House. I've become a good painter. Right, any painters here? <laughs> all right. So no more. Because you're being striked. Hollywood will no longer be. No more music. No more entertainment. No more wa -a -wa -a -dov -dov. No more baby. And no more that evil movements and the way they dress up. The way they dress up. My girls, my girls, my girls, my daughters, the love of my life, my eyesight you are. I love you. You listen to these female singers hmm? and you make them your life. Please, I beg you, wake up. My sons, don't. What have you got in your room on the walls? You've got a singer's uh, portrait or something? Throw it in the bin. That's where it belongs. I'm not talking about the person. I'm talking about the action and the deeds of that person. The action of that person deserves filth. In the bin. In the bin. In the bin. Don't. You want to have a role model? My son and daughter? Jesus Christ of Nazareth. This is your role model. This is the crown of glory. You need to make him your role model. You need to make him the crown of your glory. You need to make him your idol. 
Jesus. No one else. No one else, my beloved. And then it continues, says, No craftsman of any craft shall be found in you anymore. No craftsman of any craft shall be found in you anymore. Craftsman here refers to all those people who have a very big head who are wise. They're craftsmen. America, why do you think, became so successful and so advanced? Because America opened the window of opportunity to whoever has got a big massive brain anyone who is in the scientific field and very successful america said come if you're being paid in your country a million dollars we will pay you 10 million just come and work for us in the military field we'll pay you 10 times moreover in biology in every field they opened the window of opportunity and paid them much more than what they are paid in their own country they gave him an offer they never were able to resist nor say no to it they took all the brains these are the craftsmen so come and build us a weapon nobody has come and create a virus nobody has created as yet <laughs> But definitely Anthony Fauci is not in that category of big brains. But you know what? America took, offered, gave, opened the door. Come, we'll give you permanent residency straight away on the spot. We'll give you a residence to live in. We'll give you this much money. Couldn't resist. They took all the skilled people. These are the craftsmen to create things for America, to make it the superpower of all nations. No more craftsmen in America when it gets striked by the Lord Jesus. So all that technology, all those brains behind that technology will no longer exist. Gone. Gone. And the sound of a millstone shall not be heard in you anymore. Millstone crushes the grain of wheat, food, sustainability. Millstone represents sustainability. When it gets strike, no more. They feed the, o the fish in the ocean with the food they just throw in the ocean. They can feed all of Africa. The amount of food America throws into the ocean can feed all of Africa and no one needs to starve anymore. They won't give it to Africa, they will feed the fish. The country that fed the fish, a time is coming, will not be able to feed its own people. Will not. The millstone shall not be heard in you anymore. Food. Verse 22, number one, no more entertainment. Hollywood is gone. No more craftsmen. All people that are so skilled and highly skilled, no more gone with the wind. And the millstone, no more sustainability, no more, no more being able to sustain her own self, no more. Verse 23, the light of a lamp shall not shine in you anymore. What does light represent? Light represents the day. When you're in the light, what do you do? You move. So what is light? Movement. What is movement? Work. So when it says here, because don't forget, the book of Revelation is a symbolic prophetic book. Right? So we need to undo it. We need to find the, the secret to this language. So when it says the light of a lamp shall not shine in you anymore, that means no more work, no more movement, no more trade with America. All the people who traded with America will no longer do because America will fall and it will be no longer needed by those nations. You see now, 
so many nations trade with America, not because they love America. No, they love themselves and their own success. They want their economy to be strong. America is the reason to strengthen their economy. That's why everybody's trading with America. When America falls, no more light, no more work, no more trade, no more connection with the rest of the world. Gone. No more. And the voice of bridegroom and bride shall not be heard in you anymore. You see, the light, why the light first and then the bride and the, the bridegroom and the bride? Because what is the bride and the bridegroom? Yeah, marriage, correct. But what happens in marriage? There is a bond. There is unity. There is a link together. So, you see, there is no light, there is no trade, no work. There is no more bond between America and the rest of the world. There is no more bond between America and so many other nations of the world. Because when America gets strike, that relationship, just like in the marriage where the two become one. And don't forget, what is the UN? <laughs> United. <laughs> United Nations over evilness. They're united like the matrimonial bond. But this unity is outside of Jesus Christ. The only true unity is when Christ is the one who is bounding you together. If you are bounded outside of the Lord, there is no unity, there is no bond, everything is fake. Unless the Lord is in the equation, forget it. That is why so many relationships fall apart because they were never built on Christ. They were never founded on Christ. They were never bonded by Jesus Christ. They did it outside of the Lord. They loved each other outside of the Lord. They committed to each other outside of the Lord. They started strong. They ended up gone. Because the only relationship that lasts forever is when Christ is the foundation to that relationship. Period. The church walks away from the Lord, destroys, destroys itself. Family walks away from the Lord, divides. A person walks away from the Lord, is lost, is lost. The current of the world will come and swipe, just take you away from the Lord. Take you away from the Lord and when you walk away from the Lord, there is only one thing, darkness, evilness, death, total destruction. So the light of a lamp shall not shine in you anymore, no more trade, the voice of a bridegroom and the bride, well, there is no more bond. There, if there is no more bond, there, there is no more trade. There is no more exchange. And you see, the, uh, the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall not be heard in you anymore. Why? Because for your merchants were the great men of the earth. The merchants of yours, America, were the great men of the earth. Why were they great? Because you are great, America. At the moment, America is great. And whoever trades with America is also great. But when the great America goes, the great merchants will go with it. They will fall as well. Because when America's economy collapses, guess what? The rest of the world's economy will collapse. So all the other great nations will no longer be great because their economy will also come tumbling down to the ground. No more great. Living the American dream. <laughs> Don't know. Why do you want to live a dream? Isn't it much wiser to live a reality than a dream? Someone who lives a dream outside of the Lord is living emptiness, chasing the mirage in the wilderness, in the desert. Stop chasing the mirage, it's not water. So stop running after something that is non-existent. So you need to wake up, come to the light, who is Jesus Christ. 
and live the truth. What dream? Make America great again. Is that what they say? <laughs> Make America great again. The Lord Jesus is good, not great. So when somebody comes and says God is great, or no, God is good. When you go beyond good, this is good and this is great. The moment you go and say great, you start comparing. So if you say God is great, what are you comparing God with? Is there someone else good and this God is better than the other one? Is it? So are you comparing God with someone else or with something else? No, God is good. Why? Because when it's good, there is no comparison. Why there is no comparison? Because God says, I'm the only one. There is no other one you compare me to. Because I am the only being that existed internally, not externally. You know, when you, when you hear the word, God is perfect. What does that mean, God is perfect? Maybe someone will say, well, God is perfect because everything in him is perfect. He didn't say much, did he? <laughs> God is perfect. Well, he's perfect. The way he talks, the way he does things, the way he walks, everything's perfect about him. No. Yes, but no. Why? When we say God is perfect, what does that mean? It means he is the only being that came into existence by himself and no one else. All of us and every other creation came into existence by an external force preceded that being. So we came because of mom and dad. If it wasn't for mom and dad, we wouldn't have come. So now, who created me, mom and dad? By the grace of God, by the will of God, by the help of God. But on earth, who created me and brought me to earth? Mom and dad. So when somebody else created me, I cannot claim the word perfection upon myself. I'm not perfect because I did not create myself by myself. I did not come into existence by myself. Therefore, I will never be able to claim the word perfect for myself. But God can because he's the only being that came into existence by himself. There is no one else before him nor after him. Wow, that's why he's perfect. He came into existence by his own power. That's why his beginning has no beginning. So, for your merchants were the great men of the earth. For by your sorcery all the nations were deceived. Wow. Now, please pay attention, especially the young ones, my beautiful sons and daughters, those who are teens, 20s, 30s, even 40s. And obviously, plus. For your what? Look at this. For, your, for by your sorcery, all the nations were deceived. All the nations were deceived. For by your sorcery. What is sorcery here? Like magic, yeah? Another word for it, magic. What does sorcery mean here in this particular verse? It's not like black magic. You go to one of these clairvoyants or whatever card they use and some of us do it. Ugh. If anybody, if anybody here calls himself or herself a Christian and they go to a sheikh and I don't know where, a clairvoyant, and uh, they put some cards on the table and they told me my future or they put a cup and they read me what's going to happen. Will I get married? Not. Will I have a successful business? Not. If you go there, I will kill you myself. 
Red belt in karate reminding everybody, I chop chop you even though I'm wearing a long skirt, I will still chop chop you. <laughs> now, on a serious note, don't ever, please, I'm begging you, don't ever go anywhere to tell you what can happen to you in the future. Some girls, they want to go because they can't wait. Is this boy for me? What's his name? James? Poor James is gone now. <laughs> He's destroyed. And so many people seek this alternate evil way. You have no idea what you've just opened upon yourself, which you will not be able to shut. You've opened an evil door and allowed Satan to enter your life freely because you went willingly there. So you open the door to Satan. He will come with his foul spirits. You will never find rest in your life until you come back, ask the Lord for forgiveness for this particular point I'm talking about. You come to the Lord and say, Let, I went and asked this person to write something, wrap it up and put it under the pillow or in my pocket and carry it with me. If you've got something like that, you better bring it to the church. We will deal with it. Don't ever do that. Don't ever do that. Don't ever. There's only one way to the Lord Jesus. When you come, repenting, Ask him for forgiveness and putting everything in his capable hands and saying to the Lord, you do in me as you please, Lord. I don't care if I'm going to marry James or Rachel. As long as you are willing it, Lord. As long as you are happy with it, Lord. I'm doing nothing else but your way, Lord. Your way. But in this particular verse, for by your sorcery, all the nations of the world were deceived. All the nations of the world were deceived. Sorcery, like magic. I'll tell you what sorcery he means. You know, my beloved son, you know, open your ears, huh? When you look around and your eye falls on this Rosella called Elizabeth, when you look at the face of Elizabeth, you look into her eyes, it's like magic, sorcery. <laughs> she, her eyes just grabbed you like a magnet, drew you to her like a magnet. You could not control your feelings, your emotions. You're a man and all of a sudden you're acting like a little kid. Oh, oh. Your friends are saying, what's wrong with you? Hello? Anybody home? You're hip you're, you've been <laughs> hypnotized. <laughs> oh, did you see her eyes? It worked on me like black magic. Sorcery. <laughs> you got attracted to what you saw. This is the meaning of, for by your sorcery, all the nations of the world were deceived and the word deceived is at the end <laughs> because the beginning you think this is the beauty at the end <laughs> you will find out my dear son if this girl whom you have fallen in love with is beautiful or not on the first day of honeymoon because she will wake up without makeup So if you want to guarantee what you see is what you get, find a girl without makeup. This is it. That tough luck. That's it. <laughs> For by your sorcery, America, all the nations of the world were deceived. Wow. The world got attracted to America. Like a magnet, they got drawn. From America, Hollywood, so many millions got attracted. It's like sorcery, like magic. 
oh, amazing. I went to America, California, and I went, I went to all those big places and these estates. I went to Las Vegas, oh, sorcery. Look at these mansions, look at these buildings, look at these clubs, look at the colors. I was blown away. So I got drawn to America. I started traveling to America. I started imitating America as nations. What America does, Australia does. Even Saudi Arabia. Aha. From camels to Rolls Royce, Lamborghini. Mate, you should have stayed on the back of that camel. You don't need the Lamborghini, Mr. Sheikh. The Lamborghini destroyed you, brother. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Changed. Even in the little villages somewhere where you cannot see, you don't even know they exist. An old person comes with a mobile. <laughs> and their Wi-Fi connection much stronger than Sydney. The cow is going moo and he's going boo. <laughs> Everyone got attracted. <laughs> Somebody's happy with it. <laughs> I'm going to bring you out here in a minute. <laughs> Everybody got attracted to America because it's like sorcery. When they do black magic on someone, that someone is lost, can't think anymore. Blown away by what they see. Attraction. So attractive. The way America dresses. The way America smells. The way America looks. The way America does things. Everyone wants to imitate America. Ripped jeans. Tattoos. Rap, rap music. Like Middle East, they do rap. <laughs> now it's... What's going on? For by your sorcery, all the nations of the world were deceived by you, America. When we focus on materialism, now please pay attention, I beg you. When we focus on materialism, and when I say materialism, I'm talking about everything that is visible to the naked eye. Therefore, everything that is tangible, everything that is physical, that includes your own body. That's materialistic. So when we focus on materialism, we focus on things that are external. Everything, everything that is external, everything that is visible to the naked eye is only temporal. It will not last, my son. It will not last, my daughter. You focus on your body and your body only. It will not last. One day, the termites will eat that body in the grave. We forgot to focus on the spiritual side of us. The attention is being made only on the materialistic, physical being. We lost track of the spiritual. No wonder we cannot differentiate between our right hand and left and the left. No wonder. No wonder the world is walking in absolute blindness, spiritual blindness, because the only time I and you, you and I, are open seeing everything clearly with our eyes when Christ is ruling of our life. When Christ, no, no, please, no clapping, no clapping. We, this is, this is serious. This is serious. So when we get drawn by what the world is offering, and in this particular passage, America is offering the woman 
we became focused on it totally blind totally blind now I just want to see who is the next rapper I just want to see who is the next singer I just want to see who is coming to Australia you know I don't care if the ticket is a hundred two hundred a thousand dollars I'll buy it in the black market I'm going into Sydney Stadium because this guy this girl came from America who gives one penny they'll come they will laugh at you they will tell you things absolute nonsense empty vanity of all vanities they'll make millions out of you and sentence you to darkness and you say Wah! people running just to get to the stage and you see these boys and girls crying losing it because this guy went Woo! Woo. What is this? any brain like what is this that's foolish childish in a more blunt way it's stupid now seriously it's stupid so what this what's this I can do it too <laughs> like what is the big deal I beg you I beg you when you come to the Lord there is no more nonsense there is no more childish behavior there is no more deceptive way there is no more sorcery the Lord is the light of the world everything in the light is clear everything in the light is truthful everything in the light is genuine everything is the, in the light what you see is what you get no two ways about it there is no hypocrisy there is no acting there is no deception genuineness with Christ you get nothing but genuineness he will come and he will say I love you but you're doing things against me I don't like it the world will come and say keep on doing it you're doing great brother and they call you brother <laughs> a lie a lie how many friends called each other bros but when things went wrong where are my bros when I fell when I went into prison where are my so-called bros the one and only the true friends in my life where are they gone gone but Christ never never leaves for he is the genuine person you could ever meet you could ever have in your life you won't get anyone genuine as Jesus Christ of Nazareth impossible he will say it in your face I don't like your behavior but I will never let go of you I will be with you and I will do everything in my power to make sure you come to me but you need to open the door I will not force myself in because if I do that I'll be seen as a thief I will knock I can break the door and break your head if I wanted to but I will not do something against my own nature for I am holy what is inside of me is outside of me. When I created you on the basis of love, I gave you with love freedom and with freedom choices and with the choices, the will to decide for yourself whether you want to come to me freely or reject me freely. But if you choose freely and willingly to come to me, I will make sure you'll be with me in the end. There is no power in existence that can take you away from the hand of God who was nailed on the cross in the flesh no one for I have engraved your names in that wound I've engraved your names there no one can wipe your name my wounds protect you my wounds preserve you my wounds guarantee you life as long as you let me work in you stop being deceived by the temptations 
of the world, and in this case, United Nations America. And we said last week, look at the UN. Like, I just wonder, like, is there any country, 193 countries are members of the UN. 193 countries. None of them are men. None of them. They brought down the flags of 193 countries and they put the LGBT flag. Is there any more men? Shame on all of you. You know why? Because the UN is built on Satan anyway. It's built on Satan. And last verse and the end of the chapter. Chapter 18. And in her was found the blood of prophets and saints and of all who were slain on the earth. And in her was found the blood of prophets and saints. We need to pay attention how John the Beloved is writing here by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And in her was found the blood of the prophets and saints. You see, here he didn't say, if these prophets and saints, their blood was shed, he should have said, and in her was found the blood of the martyrs. Because anyone who gets killed for the sake of the Lord Jesus is called a martyr. But John the Beloved did not mention the word martyr. Yet their blood was shed. So when somebody's blood is shed for the name of the Lord Jesus, coming, speaking in the name of the Lord, and somebody kills that person, that person is called a martyr. But here, John the Beloved did not mention the word martyr. He said, and in her was found the blood of the prophets and saints. So he's trying to say something else. Now, just something along the way, even though it may not be related to our topic. But speaking of martyrs, just like there are seven sacraments in the Holy Apostolic Universal Church of Christ, so as there are seven divine feasts, like the Feast of Epiphany, Feast of Nativity, Feast of Resurrection. These are divine feasts. There are seven feasts. There are seven sacraments, so as there are seven ranks in the church. What are the ranks? From the number one to the last, from the first to the last, the first, the just. Don't we hear when we speak about our father Joseph, the stepfather, the one who looked after the Holy Mother? What do we refer to our father Joseph? We call him Joseph the just, don't we? See, that's a rank. So, Joseph the just, the first top rank in the ranks is the just. Followed by number two, the righteous. Job of the Old Testament, he is referred to as the righteous Job. So, the second rank is righteous. The third rank, prophets. The fourth rank, apostles. The fifth and last rank, martyrs. The top rank, the just. The last rank, martyrs. That's five. I said seven. So how did it be seven? Where did that come from? Out of the apostles, two ranks came out. Priests and deacons. Five and two, seven. The last rank is the martyr, the church fathers, took the last rank and put it first because martyrs are the ones who gave Christ the ultimate price their blood what is their blood their life is there anything more expensive their life no if you are dead you cannot be just you cannot be righteous you cannot be a prophet you need to live in order to be just righteous prophet apostle so the ultimate thing you could ever offer Christ is your life, which is your blood. That's why the martyrs, which is the last rank, became the first rank in the church. Because they imitate the martyr, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who was killed on the cross. He's a martyr. 
But in here, it says, and in her was found the blood of the prophets and saints. And what else? And of all who were, who were slain on the earth. Now, when he's putting it this way, in her was found the blood. The blood here talks about suffocation. You know, when, when you kill an animal without slaying that animal and allowing for the blood to be shed, when the blood remains in that animal and you kill that animal, that animal has been suffocated. So the blood of the prophets and the saints were found in her, in America. Suffocation. What has been suffocated here? The prophets. Who are the prophets? Who carry the word of God. So what has been suffocated in America? The word of the Lord. And the saints are the representative of the Lord. So the prophets, those who carry the word of the Lord, the saints who represent the Lord, those who are trying to represent the Lord, those who are trying to speak the word of the Lord, America has suffocated them. Why? Because America is the UN and the UN will let you and allow you to speak about anything and everything except God. The word of the Lord is suffocated. You can go and speak about changing your sex. You can go and say the dog is your God. But to come and speak about the true divine God, they will throw you out. They will never let you. Because... UN is built on one thing, so-called human rights. <laughs> the biggest lie ever. Let me tell you this, and I'll finish it off on this. And that's the last verse. It's going to take me another 10 hours, okay? <laughs> if anyone, anyone comes and says we need to be standing for our freedom, our freedom. Hmm? Can you please define your freedom? To see whether I'm willing to fight for this freedom or not. You see, when you want to go and fight for something, you need to know what you're fighting for. You see what happened with that pandemic thing in 2020 was a lie, that pandemic. You see, so many people were fighting for human rights, freedom. The problem, <laughs> the problem is, the freedom which you were fighting for was the very freedom that got you into all this mess in the first place. You see, because you chased your freedom outside of the Lord, that's why you were enslaved. If we had chased the freedom which God gives us, no one can enslave us. No one, because God is the protector. I never put a mask on. And when I celebrated the Holy Mass, I don't give one penny. They can come and what? Put a mask on my mouth in the Holy Altar. I'll shred them. I will step on their Satan. You don't shut my mouth, you little, little mouse, Satan. Because the only one who can shut my mouth is the one who gave me this mouth in the first place. His name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So you and your Satan can go to hell. Please. The UN, which is run by America, all it talks about human rights. And I'll leave you with it. I've said this before and I'll say it again. The Western world, the Western world has succeeded, has succeeded tremendously in giving value to everything, but has failed miserably in giving purpose to everything. The Western world, 
being America, Canada, Europe, Australia, the Western world, has succeeded tremendously in giving value to everything, but has failed miserably in giving purpose to everything. The problem is, until we find out what the purpose of the thing is, we will never be able to give it value. What is, to cut it short, what is the value of a human being? Human rights. What is the purpose of the human being? The right to be a human, not human rights. What is the value of a human being? Human rights. What is the purpose of the human being? The right to be a human. We focused on human rights, human rights value, and we totally ignored the purpose of the human, which is the right to be a human. What is the right to be a human? Let's talk about this. If we can't find an answer to what is the right to being a human, we can never find the value to this human. And if we come ignoring the purpose, focusing on the value, we will do one thing to that human. We will abuse that human. And this is exactly what is happening in the 21st century. The human being is being abused because the focus is on the value, ignoring the purpose. What is the right to be a human? To find the answer to this, we need to go back to our origin. What is our origin? In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. He is our purpose of existence. God, whom we are denying as the UN America. Denying. It's all about human rights. Where is God? No, you can't talk about God. If America focused on the Lord Jesus, and enough of this nonsense, deceptive ways of United Nations. There is no such thing as United Nations. None of the nations are united because everybody hates everybody. Why? Because that unity is built on Satan. <laughs> Where are they going to get true love from? Satan? <laughs> are you kidding me? Out of Satan comes hatred, evilness, deception, murder. Murder. What did the Lord Jesus say about Satan? He said he is the father of all lies and he is the killer of mankind from the very beginning. What did Satan do in the Garden of Eden? Killed Adam and Eve. And after that, what did he do? Got Cain to kill his brother Abel. He's the killer. UN is built on Satan, the liar of all and the killer of all. And they're talking about human rights. That's why everybody is enslaved. The pandemic and so many other things, nonsense, global warming. In fact, the temperature is cooling, is not warming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a laughable matter, absolutely. There are studies proving that temperature is cooling is not warming. And what a nonsense, global warming. And the church is involved in supporting such nonsense. And you as a church leader, what is your job talking about? Talk about the Holy Bible. Talk about the Lord. What's it to you, global warming? Leave it to Satan. Let him go and warm his, himself up because he lives in hell anyway. It's kind of warm. <laughs> what global warming? He's got plenty of warm, warm in there. <laughs> Poor thing, we need to cool him down a bit. <laughs> I'll take him to Antarctica. <laughs> um, or maybe to Klaus Schwab. Him and, uh, him and Davos. Mm? The Lord will pluck Davos from its roots. And whoever goes there, whoever goes there, they'll be plugged from their roots because they're playing with fire. Evil worshippers. Evil doers, Satan worshippers. Hmm? World Economic Forum, Heil Hitler. Man, you know what? When you look at what is happening in the world, you need to know it's absolute evilness. 
Can the medical field lie to you? Yes, because it's controlled by the biggest mafia, the big pharma. Of course they will lie to you. Can the entertainment lie to you because it's controlled by Illuminati, Satan worshippers? Can the church sometimes lie to you? Yes, because it's infiltrated. It's the end of times. Today you speak to some Christians, and I'll make an emphasis on the word some. Christians. The moment you start talking about the Lord, they'll say, this is too much. What are you on about? Talk about the Lord, but not too much. Why are you talking about the Lord? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Am I in the wrong place? <laughs> Who do you want me to talk to about? About your big nose? Or your big ears? Well, if you've got big ears, then listen. Open them up. Don't talk about the Lord. It's too much. You're taking too long. Wow. Wow. Look how Satan talks. Even through Christians. So-called Christians. If we don't talk about the Lord, then who else and what else is left? If we don't get preoccupied with the Lord, then what is our purpose here on earth? Then why are we calling ourselves Christians? Might as well forget it, deny, and be a man and say, I'm no longer a Christian, I'm an atheist or whatever. Or I worship something or whatever. The leaf of the tree fell, this is my God. Or the wind blew and I said, oh, what a feeling, Toyota. <laughs> worship something else. You need to be true to yourself. True. My son, why do you want to go to the club? Why do you want to go clubbing? Why do you want to go out with girls, boys and girls, having fun somewhere in the city? The wrong fun. Why? My daughter, you need to look after yourself. You need to look after your health, both physical and spiritual. You have been purchased, my son and my daughter, by the ultimate price, the blood of the Lamb of God. You are not cheap. You descend from the royal family. God is your daddy, and your daddy is the king of all kings. You are a king and a queen descending from the royal family. You're not cheap. You are the most expensive, precious being ever to exist in this universe. You're not cheap to go and sell yourself so cheaply. Step on Satan. You don't belong in the dark alley, you belong in the light. You don't belong in the club, you belong in the church. You don't belong to Satan, you belong to Christ the King. You are the Son of God, by, made by the Son of God, the only Son of God. He, he, adapt, he adopted us through baptism, one of the seven sacraments of the church. He ad, ad, adapted us to being children of God through the Holy Sacrament of baptism. You don't belong nowhere else except Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Where are you going, my son? Where are you going, my beloved daughter? Enough. Cover yourself. Don't go out naked. Look at the bishop. <laughs> Don't I look cute? Yes. I'm not ashamed to go out with this outfit. Let everybody look at me and laugh and ridicule me. This is my honor. I'm not going to come to the church dressed up in this way and if I go out somewhere, I put on a suit. No, no. This is my uniform. This is my identity. Even if I go to the city, I'll go like this. 
Now you like it, you don't, beside the point. You don't tell me how to live for the Lord, I'll tell you how to live for the Lord. My children, I beg you, I beg you, come to the Lord. Stop hurting Him. Stop upsetting Him. Stop breaking His heart. Next time somebody comes singing for this world, let him sing for himself or herself. Let that stadium be empty. Who cares? I know a good, I got it. What happened to a good and bad? You're bad. Does anybody use these kind of words? I'm bad. You're bad. Michael Jackson, you started as a young teenager in the church choir. For God's sake, what happened? Look at Hollywood. Destroyed you, my dear. I pray the Lord has mercy on you. But look how you began. Look how you ended. You started singing and praising the Lord. In the end, you worked for Satan. And look what Satan has done to you. You went and changed your color, your face. You changed everything God made you to be. You lost God. And when you lose God, you've lost everything. And the ultimate is your spirit, yourself.